Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. Each year, fans of the Suffolk Punch Draft Horse get together to share with one another information about their horses and also to show off their breed to an interested public. The 2023 event was held at the Foothills Equestrian Nature Center in Tyron, North Carolina. In addition to some halter and driving classes, folks watched several demonstrations, including horseshoeing and mane and tail braiding. We'll show some of that as well as the log skidding competition and the very competitive precision pull competition, which went to a tiebreaker. One of the visitors came with her daughter from Australia, where she is raising Suffolk punch horses and has a very interesting story to share. I'm, my name's Catherine Whiting. I'm from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, and I'm over here today um, at the gathering. I haven't been for a few years because of COVID, um, but I always enjoy it when I come over. Um, I know a few of the breeders here. Um, I've always liked heavy horses, but I've always had other horses. Um, and I, I started off with two Cly rescue Clydesdales, um, and they both died. So I heard about Suffolk's and I looked them up on the internet and I found that there was one for sale in New South Wales, in Australia. So I said to my daughter, Julie, do you want to go for, do you want to go for a drive? And she said, where to? And I said, down to New South Wales to look at a horse. She said, okay. So we jumped in the car and off we went. It was about a 12 hour trip. And we saw uh, a mare that was for sale that was bred in Australia in Inverell. Uh, from English Lines and uh, I bought her, I, I fell in love with her the minute I saw her and I got her trucked up to Queensland and then the issue was there wasn't anything I could breed with her to breed so I imported some frozen semen from the UK and I ended up with two fillies um, then after that there was nothing more from the UK uh, so I my daughter had been to America and she said, Mum, you really need to go. And I said, oh, okay. So I came to America and that's how, to the gathering. And that was when I met Rodney, Rodney Reed. Rodney, um, we sat across the table from each other at a meal and we got chatting about horses. And uh, from that, it sort of snowballed from that night on. Rodney spoke to John and spoke to Mark DeCorn, John Hammond and Mark DeCorn. And between them, the three of them decided that they were going to gift me three foals. So it was going to be a breeding trio, two, two fillies and a, and a colt. And they came to Australia in May 2018. Um, they had a very long trip. Um, they, uh, the, the colt came from Michigan. The, one of the fillies came from Texas. The other filly came from New Hampshire. And they all met down in Kentucky where they were quarantined for three weeks and then they were trucked back to Chicago. They flew from Chicago to Los Angeles, from Los Angeles to Hawaii, from Hawaii to Auckland where they spent another two weeks in quarantine. And then they flew over to Sydney and then they were trucked up to me in Queensland. And I was amazed at the condition they were in when they actually got off the truck, I took a video of them and they were just perfect. They were beautiful, in really good condition. So the carriers were excellent. They'd never carried, they were racehorse carriers. They'd never carried heavy horses before. And they actually put it on their site. And I said, well, this is a first for Australia because it's the first time that three American Suffolks have ever come into Australia. One of the mares, when she was old enough, she had a, uh, a foal. It was a colt. Um, and he'll be two years old in December around Christmas. His name's Endeavour and there's a reason behind that. Because it's an English breed horse, Captain Cook came from England around to the east coast of Australia in the Endeavour, the ship Endeavour. 
and also there's a space shuttle called Endeavour which is the American connection so that's why he was called Blue Gum Endeavour so he's he's beautiful he's got the same beautiful temperament as his father Eli Decorn's glad Eli um, the other mare she unfortunately and it happens she lost two folds they weren't they were nine months and she lost both it was a uh, a colt and a filly but she's going back to Eli this year and I'm fully confident that she will be fine she mightn't have been just quite old enough or whatever mature sure. enough mature sure. enough it happens I mean yeah, it, it's course. life it's life. Right. so I'm very confident this time that she will have a, her foal um, that's about it really um, what do you do with them what do you hope to do with them um, I'm just a breeder yeah. um, I actually do long reining and I use a slide you know, you know the slide that you have I don't not sure what you call it here the slide you get behind them in the reins and oh. you ride on them you know, yeah, the slide. yeah 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 right right um, I'm not sure what you call it here I do an obstacle course you know I put out a whole lot of markers and we go over poles and around you know. On the slide, that's on. Uh, that's not on snow. That's not in winter. No, time. That's no, on no. Ground. We don't have snow yeah, where yeah. we live. It's very right. hot. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, in Queensland. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's it's really just for my own. It's it's a hobby. Yeah, you know, okay. It's a hobby, and it snowballed from that very first mare that I got. That I fell in love with. Yeah. Uh, it snowballed from there. So I was very grateful to the three boys here, who actually had the foresight because there's not many Suffolk's in Australia right. um, I had seven and uh, there's seven now down in Victoria so in Australasia there's about 14 of them so that that's it there you know, there, there aren't many of them right so that's it really Bring your love of rural life home with the 2024 Draft Horse Calendar. Each month features a different photo of draft horses at work. There's even a smaller photo featured on the grid pages. The calendar measures 12 by 19 inches and the wire binding ensures it lays flat on the wall. Large grid squares make it useful for keeping track of appointments or special occasions. They cost only $17.95 each with free shipping, or get two for $32. Just call 877-647-2452 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. We go to fair every year, so people, like, you have a thousand people walking through on the hour, at least. Uh, to see our horses, so <laughs> he's never been on cross ties, so we'll see how he does. And be careful because they'll eat it, it is grass, like I said. <laughs> so what I try to do is get them split up, you're fine, drape it over, <laughs> he's trying to eat it. And my, and we need bridal cats up here, so I just let it sit up here. What I'm going to do is pull um, just a little piece up top here, that's it, and then split it in half, and I'm going to tie this middle piece in there because it's going to hold this bump for me so it doesn't slide around. I didn't know about this my first time <laughs> until someone told me about it. I was like, I wish I knew that years ago. Because <laughs> otherwise it's just... It, huge this that's all I don't do anything else and it's enough to to keep it there you're fine so again you don't want the raffia or you want the main on top of the raffia here um, my name's Jennifer Knighty from Alliance Ohio and my husband Andrew and I run Blue Ridge Farmstead and we raise and breed and train Suffolk punch draft horses you raise other stuff there too, is that right? You got other livestock? Um, primarily the horses, but I, I myself have a bunch of poultry, so I do have like chickens and geese that I do hatch out and sell, but nothing crazy. Sure, nothing major. <laughs> nothing major. And so what were you doing yesterday as a demonstration? Um, yesterday I was demonstrating how to breed uh, the mane and tail on the Suffolk Punch Draft horses. And the, the way that you're doing it is a little bit of a departure from, say, if you go to the state fair and you see the Pertrins and Belgians braided up, the way you're doing it is different from the way the American draft horses are being braided. Is that right? Yes. 
So apologies for terminology because I'm not sure what you call it with the Pertrons and Belgians, but when they do the rolls and the uh, ribbons on them with the Sulfogs, you're braiding in the raffia, which is a grass, into their mane and tail, and you also have the ribbons and, and the plates as well. And this style, um, you, uh, you picked it because it's more um, traditional with the Suffolk or it's more UK yes, oriented? Yes, very much traditional and UK. Okay. Yep. All right. And um, it looked like what, what on the main, what, what the goal is, is to, um, it, what is supposed to show uh, down, the, down the main on the top? So when you're looking at the braid, you primarily want to see the raffia itself. Um, so when I was braiding my horse yesterday, he was moving a little bit too much. I saw too much hair that I would have uh, probably shown him in, but they got they kind of got the idea of it. Um, so when you're braiding in the raffia, you want to make sure that the actual horse's mane is under the raffia. You don't want it to be showing on top of it. So it's more of the twisting of your fingers and wrists as you're maneuvering the raffia and the mane as you're braiding it in. You've seen our America's Rule Yesterday three-book set covering life on the farm in the early 1900s. We're excited to bring you a fourth edition to the series, Early Tractors, featuring more than 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and lots more. Most of the photos are of new or almost new tractors back in the day, showing exactly how they were configured when they came out of the factory. Tractor collectors, history buffs, and folks simply wanting to reminisce about farm life in America's Rural Yesterday will love to have this book. It sells for $24.95 plus shipping. If you buy more than one book in the series, the price per book goes down all the way to $69.95 for all four books. To order, call toll-free 877-647-2452 or visit www.mishka.com That's 1-877-647-2452 These things are getting casual until they bring the horses in the ring and then it gets real serious because these people are serious about what they're doing here. The rules are going to be they're going to start behind the two, the two cards. When the neck yoke of the team crosses that line Then they come back through the cones, and when the neck yoke crosses the, uh, the line, there that's their time. There will be a five-second penalty if they touch a cone. There will be a ten-second penalty if they knock a cone over. First driver here is time more. Tires drive a Holland hoof, Ridgewind A. Holland Hoof, Ridgewind, Clarence. I will tell you the log was green cut and it is him. I don't know if you noticed, but Clifford didn't pick it up. He rolled it to put that chain on. <laughs> this is a timed event, so how you handle that turn on the end is still pretty critical. Cross the line. 
in time. Now, if you reset the log for the next competitor, back plenty far, so we've got plenty of room to work with. Okay, go. These two horses are horses that do this for a living. These are these are Chad's logging horses. Did you notice the little side pass in that first zone? He just had a side pass over a couple steps. Pretty well, first set of cones, wasn't it? Eight. 
10. available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com. 